Blessings, everybody. Uh, it is a new day. It's a Sunday morning. It's a day that God has made for all of us, and we should be thankful and happy to be in it. Um, we have been talking about the Horsemen Are Coming series, and I want to get back into that. I deviated from that just a little bit on last week uh, because the Lord wanted me to share some other things with you all, and um, I hope you engage that. But um, this morning, we're going to get back into the series, and I want to talk from the subject, the Red Horses uh, Concern, as it relates to communism, ecumenism, socialism, and the likes. And so we, we preference this whole thing a while back when I laid out the outline of what we were going to be talking about, and I said that I would unpack them uh, one by one individually. Uh, and so we talked a little bit about the black horse, I believe it was last Sunday, and I'm not done with the black horse yet. I'm going to get back to it, but today I want to engage this red horse um, just for a little bit, and uh, we'll see what the Lord has to say about that. But I want to say before we even get started that I am by no by no means am I the expert on this, uh, even though I am a seminary learned. And all that, when you start getting into um, this type of teaching, it can become very complicated. Uh, and to some, it can become confusing. So I am not going to put a, a claim out there that I'm the expert in this. What I will say is that I'm not going to share anything with you that I have not studied, that I, that I don't know and I am unsure about. And so uh, with that understanding, we can, we can somewhat proceed. Um, there is a revelation that I believe that God, he is speaking in this hour and this time. And I believe that I have a relationship with God that he is sharing uh, some of his mind with me. And, you know, obviously not all of it, but he's sharing some of it. And what he's sharing, I want to share that, that with you. I believe that we are in a very critical time. And um, for all believers and unbelievers as well, because if you're not a believer, it's time to, you know, get on board. But if you are a believer, then there are things that you need to get strengthened in. And uh, my job is to edify the church. And so I'm going to do that the best way that I know how. When we look at what's going on in our in our country today, as it relates to COVID-19, as it relates to the vaccine, as it relates to same-sex marriages, uh, as it relates to interfaithism, religions mixing together, there is a uh, there is this bifurcated, if you will, uh, type of um, acceptance now. Uh, that's male with male, female with female, um, uh, Hinduism with um, Christianity, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, communism with democracy. Uh, that's a bifurcation. Um, and so that is a concern of mine, and this is really where this red horse comes in at, and this is speaking towards the end, end time, or speaking to the end time. And the end time simply means not the end of the world at this, you know, as we discuss this, the end of the world will come, and that's a, a new heaven and a new earth, but at this point, we're talking about the end times, and where we are at right now, we are dealing with the end times. And the end times, simply put, is just a transfer of powers, the transfer of governmental power, uh, human power, as it were, over to a the theocratic or theocracy or to a God power, a Christ power. And so the book of Revelations, basically, it is the telling of Jesus Christ. It's all about uh, the coming of Jesus Christ. It, it's a story about everything about it is it points towards Jesus Christ. But in the interim of pointing you towards uh, Jesus Christ, there there's uh, like any soap opera, there's a lot of drama that's going on. And so part of this drama is these horses. And when I when I make reference to these horses, I am not uh, saying carte blanche that uh, these horses are things that are to be talked about in the future only things to be talked about now only, or things that are basically prophecies that were fulfilled uh, in the past only. I believe, based on the revelation in um, my study, that there are things that we have drawn a conclusion on and said that it happened during Daniel's time, 
um, I, I see a picture of that. I see a mirror of that, or I see parts of it that has not been fulfilled or that God is showing us from a mirroring standpoint that we are going to mirror what happened then. We're going to mirror it today or in a short time to come, uh, futuristically speaking. And I'm not talking about something being long, long off. When we talk about end time prophecy, we used to talk about it from afar off. And, you know, we, we wasn't living in that day. What we're talking about now and the reason why this discussion is becoming more and more pronounced, more polarized in a lot of churches and in the Christian community is because we are living in that time now. And a lot of this conversation is coming about because of what's going on in uh, our world today. And so there is a need for us to have uh, some discussion about uh, how do we how do we manage, how do we mitigate, how do we uh, how do we help how do we instruct? Uh, what is the hermeneutic uh, behind all this? Because sometimes we can get to the point, especially when you start dealing with eschatology, we don't want to drive it as we drove um, this, you, you know, um, <laughs> when faith, when we started talking about this whole faith thing and uh, prosperity in, in, in Christianity, uh, we drove it with faith just say we just believe God you just trust in God and it was almost like checkers in the mail and that you didn't have to do nothing there was no instructions behind it there was no developmental of theology uh, if you, as, it, as it were and so we don't want to we don't want to uh, 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 approach it that way we want to approach it with a um, with a eschatological esca, eschatology uh, herm, hermeneutic um, actually the word is Eschatological. As <laughs> we leave it at eschatology. Okay, so uh, we want to approach that with a understanding. There has to be a hermeneutic underneath that to undergird it, or as a substratum. That means that you know there's principles, there is study, there is definition. It has to be defined. If somebody's coming to you and they're just saying that God is coming and, and God is coming, we get all that, but but we can't just spiritualize everything. We have to put some type of hermeneutics, some type of practicality to it, uh, a different type of engagement, a different type of uh, development for us to know what to do next, especially when we start talking about the black horse the black horse deals with the, the the economics or the economy of the world, and so there's a part of uh, my in my series and in my teaching that I am going to come to you with what's next as it relates to what should we be doing as individuals, uh, as the church, as a family, and so on and so forth. Uh, because if you're thinking that everything is just going to roll out for you because you're a Christian, uh, I'm, I hate to break the news to you, but you're sadly mistaken. Because it is not. God is still expecting you to do certain things, principles that you should abide by in order for the blessing to come to you. So I really wanted to, to put that out there because I know a lot of times we have itching ears and people just want to know what's the quick fix. And that's where we are as a people. We just want things to be fixed and we don't want to put in the work in order to make that happen. So setting the stage here, the the, the book of Daniel uh, is a fascinating book and uh, in the early chapters in chapters um, 2 we talk we, we learn a little bit about the behavior of Daniel Daniel was a, a a person that came into power at the age of 25 years old he was a very narcissistic type of person uh, he was very much into himself although he acknowledged and he honored some two to three hundred different gods the main God that he was concerned about was himself. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that because Nebuchadnezzar is a type or a shadow or a figure of what we are seeing today. He basically mirrors the Antichrist in a lot of different ways. What do I mean by that? The, the emphasis on the Antichrist is that you, you look to me, you look to me. Although I see, and, and as a smoke screen, he's going to allow Hinduism and, and, and Buddhism and Islam and, and, and Christianity, he's going to allow all that to merge together, but he's going to dilute it. It's going to have uh, parts of it that will appear to be a truth, but it's going to be like wicker furniture. Wicker furniture is furniture that has a twist to it. So ultimately, underneath it all, it's a lie. 
but um, the Antichrist is this type of person. The Antichrist is going to be one that, he's, that he wants to have representatives in the earth that will carry out his will. His will is to be Antichrist. Antichrist. Sometimes we make it spooky and, you know, like horns and all that kind of stuff. No, Antichrist is just a, a, a system, a structure that goes against Christ, but it also wants to mirror Christ. So Nebuchadnezzar was one that mirrored or he pictured or he tried to set up a structure back in the day of Daniel. And so, as I said, he was a very narcissistic type person that was only into himself and he had an agenda. In his agenda, he, he built this, this statue. And um, I mentioned it before, with this statue, what was supposed to happen is that when um, the people heard um, the harp, the, uh, the music, when they heard the music, they were to stop no matter what they were doing and they were to bow and worship, to salute, to pay obeisance to this uh, statue by way of the sound that was coming uh, from the instruments. What does that look like today? That looks very much like COVID-19. COVID-19, as I mentioned in some of my earlier videos, is the crowning of a king. Nebuchadnezzar was one that wanted to rule the world. He was a very powerful man. He was a very ruthless man. And what he wanted was all the power. So although he recognized things that was around him, different gods, ideology systems and all that, ultimately the statue was to be a reflection of him. I want, I want to erect this and when you see that, you think of me. And when you think of me, you think of me as your everything, your all in all. Why am I saying all that? It's because this whole system is designed to point us to a system of the Antichrist. But before we get there, I I've got to get control of it. So in order for me to accomplish this, I am going to uh, I'm going to capitalize on on what is called COVID. Now, we understand that God allowed uh, COVID-19 and that we should take it seriously and uh, it's nothing to be played with. Um, did God actually send it? Well, I don't know if he sent it or not. I know that he's using it. it we can go back and we can, we can revisit the book of Exodus and we can see how God allowed uh, Pharaoh to bring us to our knees and if I didn't talk about it in any of my videos I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to talk about it from the standpoint of uh, God um, um, sending the plagues to get the Pharaoh out of your life what do I mean by that it means that God will send one thing after another thing and the, the only purpose behind that is he wants to shake the Pharaoh uh, from you. And, but the Pharaoh is not necessarily a man, but the Pharaoh is a stronghold. The Pharaoh is something that you can't let go of. It may be cigarettes. It may be, it may be drugs. It may be sex. It may be money. It may be, um, um, you know, it, it could just be anything. It could be stealing. It could be cheating. It could be lying. It could be whatever it is. It could, it could be a form of depression. Uh, it could be, um, uh, complaints. But whatever that Pharaoh is in your life, if once it becomes so strong, what God will do is he will allow certain things to come up in the form of a plague. I'm, okay, well, I told you that you should leave that man alone, okay? Well, you don't. You said, no, I, I love Charlie, I love John Doe, and so uh, I'm going to stay with him, even though God tells you to let my people go. So letting my people go is, is the Pharaoh, is which is representative of the sin in your life, that being released from you so you can come a, into a safe place by way of getting to Canaan land because God wants to get you to a place overflowing with, with milk and honey so he can talk to you. So that place was the wilderness. That is to shake Egypt out of you. But in order for him to shake Egypt, out of you he has to he has to free you and so and so God sends these things and if you don't if you don't if you don't go with him when he's sending the plague to to arrest you to get you to a, a, a place of provision a place of love and caring and and, and aftercare and, and all that the provisions of God what he says is I'll send another one and so when we look at that um, uh, God is God always allows things as as, as it relates to this COVID nineteen. Which what I'm saying is, did God send it? I don't know if God sent it or not, but it, there's a possibility that uh, He allowed it to be loosed. There's a possibility of that. And why did He do it? Is because uh, He is looking at a nation of of heathens. He's looking at a nation of of Christians that are weak, that are not uh, response. 
responding to uh, his word um, that are not lifting up the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ properly. That is not that has failed to pray and has failed to uh, do the works and great exploits and, and excellence that God has called us to do. So this COVID-19 is uh, uh, what I believe is what God is allowing to fester, to manifest uh, in, a, in such a way that will bring the world to its knees. However, because of the Antichrist, the Antichrist says, I am going to capitalize on this. How do I capitalize on this? What I'm going to do is because God has allowed this to happen, I am going to, I am going to get in it. I'm going to get in it. It was originally designed to just get us back into right standing or relationship. But because the Antichrist knows that his time is almost up, there is an agenda. There is a plan. So with this agenda and with this plan, what he is saying that I am going to take that and I, I am going to I am going to conquer now. So he takes what we understand as COVID-19 and he makes it the crown. He makes it the king. Even as I mentioned before, you can look at COVID-19 the 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 um, under a microscope, and I'll get what you call it. But from a chemistry standpoint, you can you can look at the cells of it and the molecular structure of it. You can look at that, and, and it looks like it's got crowns on it. So so what is that saying? It's saying the same thing that Nebuchadnezzar says. It says that I want you when you hear the music. What is the music? The music is MSNBC, CNN, all the the news platforms, uh, Twitter. Uh, um, Facebook, all that stuff, when you hear that, you become so inundated with that music that you bow, that you get fretful, you get scared, and you forget about the scripture that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. You forget about all that stuff. Then you start looking to man for a savior, as a as a savior, for a fix, for a solution. You start doing all these things. You forget about the word of God. You forget about your relationship with God. And so now the Antichrist, because he's subtly setting up a system and a structure to lure you in. So what you end up doing is you say, okay, well, uh, I, this thing is so strong as Nebuchadnezzar was so strong. And, and, and actually what he did was if you didn't bow when you heard the music, you were going to the fiery furnace. OK, now I can I can say a lot, a lot about this, but I want to stay track. So what COVID-19 is designed to do is if you don't bow, in other words, take the vaccine or if you 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 don't you know, you, you, you have to be um, you have to stay current. What is being current? Current is being uh, understanding exactly what's going on with the news and all that. So it can just keep you all messed up psychologically and emotionally in your head, in your mind to where you, you start to think that God is not enough. But but God, God is trying to get us to to see this thing like um, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. That you have to you have to get to a place where you embrace with every every conviction that you have but if not if God does not come and he does not rescue me from this attack in the land he is able I still know that he is able and with that regardless to what you tell me to do King Nebuchadnezzar King COVID I still will not succumb I will not concede I will not bow down and worship you no matter what all right we are going to park it right there and uh, I'm going to come back and with part two